I'm not sure who was less comfortable on that drive. Me, topless, wet, upside down, and trapped between the debt lid and the boot of an Audi A4 convertible, or Mick, who was driving an Audi A4 convertible with a strange man from Facebook Marketplace trapped in the boot, half naked, very wet, and upside down. This was going to take some explaining. This is a 100% true story. The Soft Top Incident by Jeff Buys Cars. I never wanted an Audi A4 convertible, but anyone who follows the channel will know that I don't mind a cheap replica, wristwatch or otherwise. After the sale of my BMW E39 Alpina B10 replica fell through, an interesting message appeared in my inbox. Hey mate, are you interested in a deal with my Audi S4 replica? And my first instinct was to say no, but curiosity got the better of me. Was this going to be a full, wide-body, sapang blue, properly built replica? Or was it just a base spec 1.8 with a few badges? I had to find out. It wasn't long before the photos landed in my WhatsApp and instantly destroyed my dreams of a well-executed, bright blue V8 slice of Versprung Dirch technique. The first photo was laughable. The car had mismatched wheels, wasn't clean, wasn't framed correctly and my attention was completely distracted by the bright blue fence, which was the item that was in focus in the picture. I laughed out loud, forwarded the photo with a snarky comment about poorly executed replicas to my car guy WhatsApp group and politely declined the car. After digitally guffawing with the guys and unanimously deciding it was a car to swerve, how did it end up on my driveway by the end of the night? Well, there is a story. A big builder from Birmingham with a proper Brummie accent, Mick and I had a lot in common. We both had Brummie accents and owned too many cars, and we were big, manly, proper men. Well, Mick is, I'm just jeff sized Anyway, I like Big Mick, and he liked the Alpina, and now that the Audi was on a set of matching wheels, the 1.8 litre turbo soft top was growing on me. After jump-starting the Alpina by hooking it up to the Volvo, Mick and I took the Bavarian for a walk. It turns out, Mick has quite a collection of cars, and there's a chance to do some business and trading together. We were starting to become car friends. Comfortably chatting away in the Alpina, we came up with a deal that put some cash in my pocket and got Mick's bum permanently in the BMW. Happy days. Back at the house, we transferred Mick's possessions to the Alpina, and Mick said, Shall I quickly just show you the roof operation on the Audi? At this point, I was running late for a swimming lesson. It was getting dark and the traffic was starting to increase. My concern was getting to the swimming pool in time to collect the kids, but I thought, what's the harm? I'm sure the roof on these Audis is dead quick. Mick hopped in the car, which was parked next to a busy main road as rush hour traffic crawled past. Drivers gasped as drivers do at two blokes. Two big manly proper men stood in the rain on a cold day in March, removing the top from an Audi. The engine sounded sweet, and so did the roof mechanism, although the audible pleasure was short-lived. With the rain lashing down, the rear section of the soft top raised, along with the front, and with the maximum amount of the interior exposed to the elements, it gave up. At first, Mick tried to shrug it off, in a sort of, oh, it always does this, sort of way, but after about 20 seconds, with the roof doing approximately nothing, it became clear that this was a problem. I reassured Mick that I was still interested in the car, while my brain played a wide variety of possible scenarios that the universe had now presented. Here we are, by the side of the road, in the rain, with a car that won't seal, getting wetter by the minute and later by the second. After trying every possible combination of key on, key off, clutch in, clutch out, hold the button, tap the button, press the button, surprise the button, and more, the situation became desperate. Mick was embarrassed as the roof had clearly worked earlier in the day when he sent me the odd wheel photos with the roof down. I couldn't let him leave in the Alpina without first securing the roof, and he couldn't drive back to Birmingham in the rain with the roof half on and half off. And I couldn't escape in the Volvo leaving him to await his fate with the RAC. No, the show must go on, and more importantly, so must the roof. Whilst Mick tried to use his manly manpower, I got busy with my fingers. Google said the roof could be operated manually with the use of the emergency roof key, the exact location of which had temporarily escaped Mick's brain, although he was sure it was somewhere in the car. There's two emergency locks that can be operated manually with the key, one near the rear view mirror and one inside the centre rear armrest. Mick and I found ourselves... In the back of the car, two big burly men with brummy accents and a lot in common, alone, together, in the back of a steamy two-door. It was at this point that I realised that my safety was potentially compromised. I was locked out of my house because my wife had the keys, alone, with a big builder in the back of an Audi. 
Stranger Danger. Who was this Mick? And more importantly, which one was going to be raped and murdered first? Pushing these thoughts to the back of my mind, we gave up on the secret emergency key lock and decided to use brute force. Mick raised the rear section of the roof while I tried to reach into the boot to explore the cavities for handles. As I was the smaller of the two, it was only natural that I'd have to be the little spoon. Despite my diminutive figure, I couldn't reach far enough into the boot without squeezing my ribs over the side of the car. So I edged my way forward and inched my feet up the tyres to try and get a finger on the big knob of the emergency key. My progress over the side of the car and into the boot via the deck lid hatch was being hampered by my t-shirt. So I removed it to allow the rainwater to act as a lubricant on my body to slide deeper into the crevasse of the convertible. Although the situation looked bizarre to me, it must have looked completely bewildering to passing drivers. There's big burly Mick stood next to a half top plus Audi in the rain with one hand on the soft top to stop it collapsing and one hand on the leg of another human, both of which are waggling in the air like a beacon that says, look at me, while still being attached to my rainwater lubricated but definitely half naked body. I was bracing against the rear of the car and the wrath of gravity, desperately trying not to fall into the darkness of the boot whilst Mick did a sort of Mr. Strongman yoga pose, trying to simultaneously stop me falling into the boot and stop the rear of the roof trapping me there. Many cars passed by, witnessing the scene before the automotive gods decided to have the last laugh and let the inevitable unfold. My search for the secret roof handle was unfruitful, but just as I began to extract myself from the uncomfortable head down position going through the centre of the car and into the boot, two things happened at once. Gravity and Mick both let go. There was a loud squeal as my wet skin slid down the rubber roof seals and Mick screamed as he could no longer hold my leg and the roof. And gravity succeeded. The slide was unstoppable. My wet torso was followed by my upturned legs and my whole body slid neatly through the hole and into the boot. There was a loud bang as my head hit the back of the car and a louder bang as the roof smashed back into the closed position and locked. Mick immediately rushed round to open the boot, but as the Audi had recognised a fault with the roof, it wasn't possible to do so. The roof wouldn't budge and the boot wouldn't open. Mick was distraught and I was trapped. In a bizarre twist of fate, my mobile phone had slid into the boot with me, but I resisted the temptation to phone my wife and explain. I could hear her voice in my head already. You're where? And stuck how? With who? And where's your t-shirt? Although Big Mick was panicking, I was able to keep quite a cool head. Impressive, considering how long I'd been upside down. By leaning down at the back of the car, Mick and I were able to communicate clear enough through the rear left light cluster. Rush hour was in full flow, so calling the RSC was out. We didn't think it wise to trouble the emergency services for fear of triggering some sort of gimp, man, slave, pervert panic, so we unanimously decided on option three. Mick would drive us to the local Audi dealer who would help. I'm not sure who was less comfortable on that drive. Me, topless, wet, upside down and trapped between the debt lid and the boot of an Audi A4 convertible or Mick who was driving an Audi A4 convertible with a strange man from Facebook Marketplace trapped in the boot, half naked, very wet and upside down. This was going to take some explaining. After a short drive, we arrived at Audi and I could hear muffled conversation by pulling the number plate light socket out and pushing my ear to the hole. Mick was speaking with the sales manager and after a little while, two technicians came to the rescue. I could feel tools tapping away beneath me and moments later the harsh light of Audi's workshop flooded the wet boot and I was free! Wrapped in an Audi beach towel and warming my hands on a hot cup of instant coffee, we chatted with the Audi staff about the perils of convertible roofs whilst they packed up the showroom for the day. They reset the roof, we said our thank yous and finally got back on our way, this time with me in the seat. Comfortably cruising back home, I turned to my new friend Big Mick and I said to him, how on earth did you explain all that to the sales manager at Audi? Mick laughed. He said he just told the story exactly as it took place, but he couldn't believe the sales manager's reaction. Don't worry, said the Audi guy, as he handed over a spare emergency roof key. It happens all the time. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. I wrote that ages ago, but it's quite nice to revisit an old piece and put it on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed that. It was all completely true.